Okay. Should be going live right about now. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. If you guys can hear me, put one, one, one in the chat. All right, so we start promptly at one o'clock, one p.m. How's everyone doing today? Can you guys hear me? I know the title of this video says Jalea George Reads. That is actually a video on our channel. But today is the Lunch and Burn. Okay. All right, so if you can hear me, put one, one, one in the chat. Just gonna just gonna give a little more time for people to jump on the call. Okay, so it's one o'clock. So welcome everyone. I guess more people will join the call as we go along. Okay. Right, awesome. So welcome to Primary School Masterclass, the Caribbean's Elite Online Educational Academy. Alright, so happy to have you with us today. Today is a very special day because we are going to have the first episode of the Lunch and Learn series, okay? This will follow the SEA format, the framework, up to 2023, uh, very, very closely. So this is information that is very, very important for all our primary school students to understand, okay? All right? So a little bit of the virtual Lunch and Learn. Okay, you are invited to the virtual lunch and learn from today, Sunday 29th of May 2022. And Primary School Masterclass will be hosting an online class 
every Sunday evening at 1 p.m. on this official YouTube channel. Okay, this is 1 p.m. Trinidad and Tobago time or 1 p.m. EST and EST, American Standard and Eastern Standard Time. So grab a plate of your favorite Caribbean food and join us for high quality education, focusing on primary school level subjects such as mathematics, comprehension, spelling, punctuation, and creative writing. This is totally free and you can have your lunch while you learn. All right, so if you guys can hear me clearly, I think I have a couple more viewers on the call. If you guys can hear me clearly, put 111 in the chat. Just click 111 in the chat. All right. Okay. So I know that you can hear me clearly. All right. So yeah. So if you want to tell us hi, tell us what you're eating today, what are you having for lunch today, that would be totally awesome. We want to hear from you. And don't, be, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below. We're always open to the comments. So let's go with this class. Let's go ahead with this class. But before I go on with the content of this class, I just want to... All right, I see Issa, Alex. I just want to encourage you guys, because school can be difficult sometimes, even with the new format of virtual learning. And sometimes physical classes too can be really, really tired. So I just want to remind you that God is with you wherever you go. Okay, he is your support system and you can count on him and he is with you wherever you go, whatever you're doing. All right, remember God and remember that he is always with you wherever you go. All right. So welcome to Creative Writing Masterclass, Words of Life. This is an extension of Private School Masterclass. So what I'm saying, guys, today we are actually going to do creative writing. We're going to do creative writing today. We can do math, we can do language arts, but I thought today would be a really good day, first time to do creative writing. If you want to do math next class, message us. If you want to do language arts next class, message us. Our WhatsApp number is right there on the screen. Okay. So welcome to everyone. Oh, Isabella says, I have mashed potatoes, veggies, and noodles. Great. Nice, nice, nice. Nice to hear that. So for this for today's class you're gonna need a couple of things you're gonna need your laptop or your tablet or your phone whatever device is best laptop is the best but you can you can use any device okay you can have a book right a book to keep for this class the best thing to do is to have a headset i have a headset because sometimes there may be noise around now okay so a headset is the best thing to use and for these two people here okay we have a guy who is very, very comfortable. He's very, very comfortable. So I'm saying to you, have comfortable clothes, okay? You don't want anything that is too, you know, affecting you from thinking and focusing. And we have this young lady who is sitting in an upright chair. Always be sitting upright, okay? Always sit upright anytime you have classes because if you sit too long in a bad position, it can hurt you in the long run. Just saying, because I know what it's about. So class rules, always be respectful, be kind, write your questions and comments in the chat. The chat box is right there. I think you need to subscribe to the channel to be able to write stuff in the chat. So don't forget to do that. All right. So great. So today's lesson, we're going to look at the sense of taste, the sense of taste, because this is lunch and learn. We're going to start off with the sense of taste. Okay, so the sense of taste is part of the five senses. We have five senses, depending on if you're in standard one, two, or three. Um, and the school that you go to, you will meet it at different times, but it's something that you, you will be meeting very, very soon. I think some people actually meet it in second year. Okay, so it's very, very important. So that is, that is the lesson for today. It is the five senses, and we're focusing on the sense of taste. All right. So today, we will learn the five senses, and some schools call it multi-sensory writing. Multi meaning many, and the different senses. And we will learn to add more description and emotion to our stories using the sense of taste. Using the sense of taste. 
Now, all this is recorded, guys, so you can check the recorded. So, revise this. I'll put any notes up here. Now, we must remember, this is very important, we must remember an adjective is a describing word. An adjective is a describing word, or some schools would say, or a word that describes a noun. Okay, or a word that describes a noun. So this is a little recap on adjectives and nouns. Also, we must remember, a noun names a person, place, animal, thing, or emotion. Okay, I think we need a comma there. Let me not fix that. Right? Okay, a noun names a person, place, animal, thing, or emotion. All right? So we need to remember what are our adjectives and what are our nouns. All right, that is very, very important. We're actually going to look at creative writing and language today. Because, you know, sometimes they're very, very closely related. Okay? So this here, this is taken from our flashcard series. So if you want some flashcards, some physical flashcards, you can order it. You could just place an order to the WhatsApp number 713-6860 and we will deliver it to you. Okay? This is coming from the language arts flashcards. Okay? So let's take a look at the nouns. A noun is a naming word. It names people, places, animals, things, and emotions. Okay? You can take down the note after. Check out the recording. Don't take the note now. I want you to pay attention. And there are different types of nouns. So, we have Bob Marley. That's the name of a person, we have the beach, that's the name of a place, okay, we have a bird, that's the name of an animal, of an animal, we have a bat, a cricket bat, the name of a thing, and a little girl smiling, she is happy, that is the name of, well, happiness will be the noun, that is an emotion, okay, right, so again, remember, a noun is a naming word. It names people, places, animals, things, and emotions. Okay? A little revision on nouns right there. Okay? Now, if you have a question, don't forget to write it in the chat. If you want me to go over something, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Because this is interactive. You can't ask questions on the call. I'm looking at them, or you can leave a comment. Okay, just write it in the chat box there. Now let's look at adjectives. An adjective describes a person, place, animal, thing, or thought. Remember, we said before, an adjective describes a noun. Okay, so it describes how a thing looks, sounds, tastes smells and feels adjectives can be colors or words that describe temperature shapes and sizes again it may be a lot of notes but you can get it on the recording this is taken from our flashcard series okay so we have different adjectives we have friendly we have historic okay we have wild like a wild animal Right? Okay. Juicy. Juicy is describing what, what are we saying there? Juicy fruit. Right? And we have happy. A happy face. So all those things are adjectives that we can use in our writing. So we must remember our nouns and adjectives. Remember, an adjective is a describing word or a word that describes a noun. Okay, a noun names a person, place, animal, thing, or emotion. All right, okay, so that is our revision for this class. Let's go forward now. If you have any questions, let me know. 
Right. So I need you guys to help me out here. I have five pictures on the screen here. I have five pictures on the screen here. And these are the five senses, but they are pictures. They are not words. Can anyone tell me the five senses, the things that we see there? If we have, let's say, the air, that's a picture of an air. What sense is that? What sense is that? If I use my ear, I'm using the sense of what? I'm using the sense of what? If I use my ear, that would be which sense am I using? If I use my nose, what sense am I using? I'm using the sense of what sense would that be? If I use my eyes, what would be the sense I'm using there? What sense am I using when I use my eyes? Then I have the lips. Well, this should really be the tongue, okay? What sense am I using when I use my tongue? And when I use my finger, or really my hand, or actually all my skin, okay? What sense am I using? Okay, so you could write that in the chat now. You could take a write of that in the chat now. And I'm gonna help you guys out a little bit since it's the first class, right? So nose would be the sense of hearing. Sorry, smell. My bad. This nose would be the sense of smell. Ears would be the sense of hearing. Okay, eyes would be the sense of sight or seeing. We have skin, which would be the sense of touch. And then we have tongue, which would be the sense of taste. And those are our five senses. So we can say, the five senses are taste, smell, hearing, seeing, touch, and sight. Oh, I think I was seeing already. Taste, smell, hearing. Oh, that's the five there, month. Right? Yeah. So the five senses are taste, smell, hearing, seeing, and touch. So I wrote it in the chat for you guys there. Right? I wrote it in the chat there. So that would be our five senses. Now we're looking at the sense of taste today. All right? Looking at the sense of taste today. But this class shouldn't be longer than 45 minutes, but 45 minutes are hour. Okay? All right? Okay? About the same time it would take to eat, right? So this little note says taste is one of the five senses. Taste is one of the five senses. We use taste to describe the things we eat. We use taste to describe the things we eat. When we use taste with the other five senses, we help the reader of our story have more emotions and feelings, okay? When we use taste with the other five senses, we help the reader of our story have more emotions and feelings. And we can say taste affects our mood or how we feel. Taste affects our mood or how we feel. So this is a little note that you can check out in the recording of the video, okay? Alright, so this is a little note that you can check out in the recording of the video. This video will be streamed on the channel, on the YouTube channel. Alright, okay. Alright, so you can pause it. You can click pause when you look at the recording and um, it will be right there and you can take it down on your own time. Alright. Good. So we have a picture of a cake. We have a picture of a cake. Now guys, if I have a picture of a cake there, which adjective would I use? Which adjective would I use to describe the picture of this cake? 
what adjective would I use to describe the picture of this cake? Any ideas? What adjective would I use to describe the picture? Would I use the adjective sweet? Would I use the adjective salty? Or would I use the adjective sour? Sweet. So Alex says sweet. Good. Pretty easy. So sweet would be the adjective we use to describe this cake. All right. I think Sherman says no smell. Good job. Side. Yes. We're getting it there. Awesome. Next, we have a picture of a lemon. We have a picture of a lemon. Okay. What adjective would I use to describe the lemon? What adjective would I use to describe the lemon? Would I use sweet, salty, or sour for the lemon? Maybe you guys have not tasted lemon, but maybe you have tasted lime before. Lime is more, um, you know, more, more of a curvy, I think. I think we use lime more in cooking. Yep, sour. Good job. All right. So it says, Alex says sour. Good. Excellent work. And finally, we have, I'm not, I'm not even going to say what this is a picture of. You guys maybe sh probably should know what this picture is. So what would this food taste like? What would this food taste like? Would this taste sweet, salty, or sour? This is an interesting one. Depending on how you order it, right? There are different combinations. So this is an interesting one. Would this food taste sweet, salty, or sour? I don't know. I don't know what you guys would say. Salty. Okay, I have a salty. Alright. Would anybody say sweet? It depends on the combination. Maybe you order it with some sweet sauce. You know? Right? But generally, right, it could taste sweet and salty. So some foods they actually have a combination, okay, right? A combination of things, right? I, I think Isabella said she's having mashed potatoes, veggies, and noodles. So I'm sure she's having some different flavors and different tastes in her mouth as she eats this lunch, as she eats, she eats her lunch, okay? And that's a good food. Foods have a combination of things and it's really, really good, very, very nice to describe them when using them in your stories. Now, these are some sentences you guys may have come up with. So we can say, you may have had different sentences, but these are general sentences that students would come, would come up with, would create on their own. Some students would say the cake is sweet. Okay. Some students would say the lemon is sour. And some students might say, I like the sauce, salty taste of doubles. Okay. So these are some examples of sentences that students would use, well, create, because it's creative writing, using the nouns and adjectives together in the sentence. Okay, so those sentences are pretty simple. The cake is sweet, the lemon is sour, and I like the salty taste of doubles. All right, so these are pretty easy sentences. All right. So what we want to do, guys, we want what we want to do here is really make our creative writing better. We want to expand our vocabulary. We want to learn new words. Imagine, imagine your mommy or your auntie or your granny made this wonderful, wonderful cake, right? And you and she did it for your birthday, or she did it for a special event like Christmas or something, right? And she got up early and she did a lot of work to mix the batter and then bake it and make sure everything is okay. And then put the ice in it and then put the sprinkles and she did a lot of work. She did a lot of work. And then, and then she asks you how it tastes and you say, good. And you say, good. Now, knowing that she probably did a lot of work you just don't want to say good. You want to give some more adjectives. You want to describe really how it tastes because after all that hard work, you really want her to know that her hard work has paid off and that 
she's she did a good job well a great job okay so these are some words that's just an example these are some words we can use instead of sweet because let me tell you everybody in your class knows the word sweet it would be really really nice if you could learn more words to make your writing a little bit better get ahead of the class expand your own vocabulary and learn some different words so your creative writing and your language and your vocabulary and everything and spelling just just gets higher goes to another level okay so instead of sweet we can use the following words we can use saccharine you can use saccharine we have sugar coated sugar coated we have sugar sugar we have sugary sugary we have sweetened sweetened this is syrupy syrupy there's an interesting one toothsome toothsome and we have vanilla a well, vanilla is more of a flavor all right but if you say something is vanilla you're very very you're really really describing exactly how it tastes it doesn't really taste sweet it actually has a vanilla taste okay so these are some words that you can use instead of sweet all right so instead of saying the cupcake is sweet instead of saying the cupcake is sweet we can say the cupcake is sweetened okay instead of saying the cupcake is sweet we can say the cupcake is sweetened all right all right okay this is our very own cupcake here right this was um sponsored by us this this haul is being sponsored by dreamy layers which you will see at the end okay i'll leave the contact information for them this call is sponsored um and this is actually um one year this youtube channel is actually one year old guys right this youtube channel is actually one year old well from tomorrow it will be but um since then many students across the caribbean have been benefiting from the content on this youtube channel so again don't forget to like and subscribe and share with anyone you think would find this very very helpful okay so instead of saying sweet the cupcake is sweetened let's go for words instead of sour let's go for words instead of sour so instead of sour we can say sour we can say sourish we can say tart and we can say vinegary okay we can say sour sourish tart and vinegary all those are different words you can use you don't need to learn all you don't need to learn all these words on the recording you can just check back pause it write down the words that you think you would want to use you don't have to use all just get some words that you like okay and expand your vocabulary right on our physical classroom which i am i'm in right now i'm in the physical classroom here that we have on saturdays we have a vocabulary wall where anytime you learn a new word or a couple of new words, we have them on the wall all the time. So anytime we come to class, we look at them. All right. So that's something you can do home as well. All right. So if you're a parent and listening, it's really, really good to have like a whiteboard or a blackboard somewhere that, you know, every week, every week, you should have at least four to five words that will be new to increase your vocabulary, you know? Just an idea. Oh, look at this look at this other sentence here. Instead of saying the lemon is sour, instead of saying the lemon is sour, we can say the lemon has a sour taste. Forgot my full stop there, sorry. Right? We can say the lemon has a sour taste. Right? Instead of just saying the lemon is sour, the lemon has a sour taste. That's a little bit more descriptive. It's a little bit better writing, guys. Okay? It's a little, little better writing. Really, really better for your stories. Okay? And this is how you build up your writing. Every day you learn a new word, you learn some writing, and then you apply it, and every day you get better. You don't just become a really good student overnight. Every day you do a little bit of work. Okay? 
right? And instead of salty, instead of salty, we can say highly flavored, highly flavored, over salted, over salted, because some foods are over salted. We have pungent, pungent, we have salted, salted, and we have one of my favorites, well flavored, well flavored, or well seasoned well-flavored or well-seasoned okay these are words that you can use to make your writing a lot better and let me tell you something to get ahead of the class you know when a teacher says this is like she would be like or he would be like wow you are learning you are reading okay and your creative writing and language is getting better all right so check out this one instead of saying like the sentence we had before I like the salty taste of doubles. Instead of saying, I like the salty taste of doubles. Okay? We can say, I like the well-seasoned taste of doubles. We can say, I like the well-seasoned taste of doubles. Alright? Okay? I like the well-seasoned taste of doubles. Okay? I think, um... I'll leave it, I'll leave it, right? We can say, I like the well-seasoned taste of doubles. What I'll do, I'll just take my arm. My picture up and it's up here a little bit. So you guys can see it more clearly. All right, that should be better. That should be better there. So instead of saying, I like the salty taste of doubles, I would say, I like the well-seasoned taste of doubles. So that is more creative that is more descriptive okay and you're using better words all right moving on so i i'm just dropping some words here for you guys instead of saying good tasting you can say different words to make your creative writing better like appetizing delectable divine flavorful mouth watering palatable rich savory tasty well prepared all these are words that you can use oh. all these are words that you can use right okay um so expand your vocabulary and make your writing a little bit better okay so instead of saying good or something just tastes good you can say it tastes appetizing it tastes delectable it tastes more watering. It tastes well prepared. All these are words that you can use. All right. Good. I think we left off on bad tasting. I can't leave out bad tasting because some foods taste bad. So, for example, instead of saying that something just tastes bad, you can say that it tastes bland, it tastes burnt, it tastes flat, it tastes flavorless. It is offensive, it is oily, it is repulsive, it is savorless. The food, instead of saying the food is bad, you can say the food is undesirable. And you can say the food is unpalatable. Okay, so I'm just dropping this here. Remember to check out the video again if you want any of these words. You don't have to learn all, okay? But it will be really good that you could learn some, one or two, and expand your vocabulary. Awesome. Excellent work, guys. So, right, let's talk about the food art project. Now, this is a really, really fun way to improve creative writing using the five senses. I use this with my personal students, right? Sometimes, because we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one classes, and depends on the student and the level they are, um, you kind of determine whether they can handle it or not. But um, the students who we allowed to do right we gave it to them and they did it they did very very well in it and their creative writing went from here to way up here because it, it's a fun interactive activity you know and you get the whole family involved you know so it is a fun way to improve creative writing using the five senses i'm going to show you how this works right now okay so the food art project right the food art project asks your parents and guardians for help 
You do not do this project without their guidance. So be sure to ask your parents for help with this. So you are going to investigate the description of taste. Use different foods such as fruits, vegetables, and nuts. You can also use breads. Be careful that you do not use certain foods if you are allergic to them. Do not use meat. Create shapes and designs to make one plate of food art. Be colorful. Describe the taste of the ingredients used. And a white plate is a good background for your artwork. Be sure to take pictures of your artwork and send them to me via WhatsApp before you eat it. Above all, be safe and have fun. And be sure to send it before you eat it because you might want to make it a certain day. Just take a picture and send it. WhatsApp it to 713-6860 and we'll check it out. Okay? All right? So I'm just leaving this here. All the description will be on the channel. Again, you can check the video again, pause it, and get the instructions there. And this is a really, really fun way. Um, any um, primary school student can do this. All right? And uh, especially if you're in standard five, we don't know yet if next year is going to be a descriptive narrative essay or it's going to be a report again because this year was a report um it's good to get your feet wet and understand both the descriptive and narrative writing and the report writing there are lots of report writing resources on the channel in the videos in this channel as well as last well this year we did a lot of that all right so that would be instructions for the food, food art. If you want to partake, you don't have to. But if you want to check us out and you want to be our student on the Sundays, uh, it would be really, really good because we could then build on that. All right. So these are some examples of the food art that our students did. Okay. The one-on-one -on -one students. All right. So um, one child would say, I made a delicious meal using tasty bread sweet and ripe bananas and savory sausage it was a delightful breakfast that i ate before going to school and what they did they took some bread and took some bananas sausage and they did their food art now if you think that this is something that's really fun to do and you want to try it out try it out and send us a picture right and we'll, we we could probably post it next week but be sure be sure to um be sure to write a description, huh? just don't do the food art. Be sure to write a description of it as well. That's important. It's delicious. We say hi then. So you're doing the food art and you're writing a short description on the foods you use, the taste of the foods you use, and the colors of the food you used. Okay? This is another example. I really like this one. Right? This is actually a unicorn. A student made. She's from Tobago, actually, right? Okay, and she wrote the pimentos were green and red, and a little bitter. The cucumbers, the cucumbers were crunchy and juicy. I enjoy eating them. The tomatoes were slightly acidic. Okay, all right. So she did a wonderful unicorn here that I'm really, really happy about. Um, I did not expect her to, to, to come up with something like that, so innovative. I read it one more time. It says the pimentos were green and red and a little bitter. The cucumbers were crunchy and juicy. I enjoyed eating them. The tomatoes were slightly acidic. So these are some things that, um, you know, she gets some adjective in there. Adjectives would be green, red, bitter. Adjectives are going to be crunchy, juicy, slightly acidic. So she's gathering some adjectives in there. So when you're writing a story, you know, um, can really, really make the reader feel a certain way, feel good about your writing and really describe a lot, okay, using the adjectives. Check out this one. It says here, the pancakes were toothsome and mouth-watering. So I think they did... Um, they did a teddy bear using pancakes and M&Ms, 
The pancakes were toothsome, which is another word instead of sweet. Instead of saying something is sweet, you can say it's toothsome. The pancakes were toothsome and mouth-watering, right? Mouth-watering, okay? Correct spelling errors on the fly, right? Toothsome and mouth-watering. If something is tasting really, really good, it is mouth-watering. Something that is mouth-watering is something that tastes really, really good. I love the taste of the M&Ms. It was a tantalizing dessert. It was a tantalizing dessert. So instead of saying something is tasting good or even delicious, where other students in your class, I'm sure, know those words, you can say something tastes tantalizing. That's a really, really nice word to put in your vocabulary wall. Okay? And these are some other pictures of food arts that we got from our students, right? You have someone made a crab using the apples. Uh, someone made this pretty flower with some peanuts, vegetables. I think there's a crick there, a crick cracker, uh, tomatoes and cucumbers, right? Okay. And we have this awesome one, this caterpillar actually, using cucumbers, carrots, I think that's cauliflower, string beans, um, yeah, and a lemon for the head. I think that's chives as well, okay? If you want to know the descriptions of these, you can message us, right? Okay, because the description actually was too long to fit on the um, slide, right? Because they describe a lot, a lot of information, okay? All right, and those are the food art. So if you want more information on the food arts, just contact us, call us. Or WhatsApp, the WhatsApp is working, 1-8-6-8-7-1-3-6-8-6-0, that's a Trinidad and Tobago number, All right? Okay, so if you need more information on that, just uh, contact us with that. And remember, right, remember, I always say this, every noun can have an adjective, right? Every noun can have an adjective, All right, okay? Let's look at rule one, not rule two just yet. That would be in the coming weeks. But rule one says every noun can have an adjective. You can always use adjectives to describe the things in your writing. So thank you, right? Thank you guys for being here. This episode of Lunch and Learn is sponsored by Dreamy Layers. Okay, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, they actually sponsored us and created the lovely cupcakes. Um, right and we did not even have to pay for that but um they did an awesome job with the cupcakes let me get one cupcake on here right it was an awesome job and we're really really thankful and appreciative okay for dreamy layers sponsoring this call okay right and students on the saturday class the physical classes had an opportunity to indulge in those cupcakes, right? Because we have physical classes um, available on Saturdays. So thank you again for Dreamy Layers. Their number is 324-8916. So check them out, right? So this is the first episode of Lunch and Learn. So happy that you guys are with us today. I look forward to seeing you in the coming weeks. So we have Alex Issa Sherman is with us today. Right. So if you want to get into contact with Primary School Masterclass, we are on Facebook. Right. Be, be sure to like the Facebook page and follow it. Um, this is the general number. Our email is primaryschoolmasterclass at yahoo.com. You can WhatsApp or call us on that number. We are on Instagram and TikTok. We are actually on TikTok as well. TikTok has a lot of nice short information and tips and tricks that both parents and students can use. Okay, so again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and subscribe or leave a comment or share with anyone that you think would find very, you know, somebody you think might get this, find this useful, right? Regardless of, you know, if they are standard five, standard four, standard three, standard two, standard one. And the reason I'm doing this is because since I'm virtual learning, a lot of students have been held back and they don't really um, understand um, well, I mean, I was speaking to one of our students and they said like, it was like a, a kind of a shock to go back to physical school, you know, because they had to transition from virtual to physical 
But right now, I think it's a good mix. It's a mix going on, right? So um, education really has changed the way how information is carried about now. So if you want any help with that or you want to become part of our classes, the one-on-one -on -one classes or the group classes, just um, message that number, contact us at that number, and we'll get you started. All right, so I'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye. Bye for now.